Now everyone, today's matchup is filled with excitement, intensity, and mystery. Coming in from Neo England, standing in at 16.4 meters, we have the Pride of Britain, the Royal Gundam, prided by the three-time Gundam fight champion, Gentle Chapman. And in the opposite corner, we have the Challenger hailing from Neo Denmark, standing in at 16.5 meters, we have the Mermaid Gundam, piloted by Hans Holger. While this mobile suit may be weaker on land, it's almost invincible in the water. Does the veteran Chapman still have what it takes to compete in the Gundam fight, or will his opponent take the upper hand? Rumor has it that Chapman's health's been in decline, and he holds a dark secret in order to help him win his match. Who will come out on top? Let's get things started. Gundam fight all set, ready, go! Gundam MSAA Review, Royal Gundam vs. Mermaid Gundam. What is up guys, this is the Transfer Gundam, and today I'm going to be doing a 2 for 1 review on two very awesome figures. Today I'll be reviewing the Royal Gundam and the Mermaid Gundam. So let's get started first off with the Royal Gundam, because it is a more simple figure. So, um, as you saw from the intro, this is the Royal Gundam piloted by Gentle Chapman, representing Neo England in the 13th Gundam fight. And I don't want to spoil too much about the mobile suit and the character, but uh, this was definitely one of my favorite antagonist mobile suits. And Gentle Chapman as a character was definitely uh, pretty cool, so I would definitely recommend checking out uh, G Gundam and watching the episode uh, with Gentle Chapman. And he does make multiple appearances throughout the show as well. So uh, again, if you haven't watched G Gundam, definitely would recommend checking it out. So uh, yeah, let's quickly get into the figure here. So let's zoom in a little bit. And first start off with the accessories. He doesn't come with a lot. He does come with this absolutely badass looking long rifle here. Uh, I don't know what the exact name of it is. I think they just called it like a long beam rifle. Um, but it just looks so cool and it's so unique looking, especially for G Gundam, especially because a lot of the mobile suits really didn't have guns um, besides the Maxter Gundam and maybe a few others. I can't really think of a lot besides this guy. Um, and yeah, this guy <laughs> just comes packing heat. And it's so funny, especially with a lot of the mobile suits um, going with more melee type weapons. This guy can just snipe you from a distance. And again, this is one of the coolest looking uh, guns I've seen in all of Gundam, in my opinion. And as you can see, he can dual wield it. So it's got a handle on top here, so he can reach and grab onto it with this hand. And then this hand is already kind of sculpted into a trigger finger. So you can easily just slide the, um, handle into this hand as well so make it look like he's firing the gun there um and then other than that the other accessories that he comes with is just a pair of closed fist which i don't have um and other than that i mean that's it so i mean a really basic figure but really well done as well so let's uh remove the gun real fast and get into more of the details here uh, i really like that he is inspired by the british royal guards you can see that in the uh head with the uh hat there and the rounded shoulders. This is a really cool looking design in my opinion. Um, and then let's just zoom in really quickly here. Get a little bit of close up on that head. Looks really cool in my opinion. And going down the rest of the body, it's got a really unique looking color scheme with like a red, a black, and like this dark teal green color. And then mix in with some yellow. Um, and then, oh, I also forgot to mention he does have two machine guns in the chest as well. So uh, there's that as well for armaments. And then going down the legs, very cool looking. Then turning to the side here. So you get this a little bit more in focus. There we go, that looks better. You just have uh, pouches on the side, uh, assuming he's got some ammo in there. And then going up. And then finally on the back part, we do have a backpack, which is not removable. Uh, I know a lot of the other Gundam figures had Corlanders. Uh, which you can remove and then in this show uh, obviously the pilots would go into corlanders and then they would go into the chest uh, and that is how they would pilot the mobile suits and for this guy i don't know um if he had a corlander or how exactly that worked but i'm kind of glad that this part's not re uh, removable and it's just a solid piece because oftentimes if you're looking for g gundam figures used um they'll be missing the backpack part so if you are looking for these types of figures uh, when you're looking like on eBay, make sure they include a back picture so you can see if they have the Corlander or not. For this guy, it's not a problem because this part doesn't come out. Um, and he's got two little boosters here, which do move a little bit. Um, and then coming down here, you can see he's got a little stamp on his butt, 
trying to see if I can get that to focus on it. Come on, work with me. Mm, yeah, it looks like it's not wanting to focus for some reason, but it does say, ooh, I mean, I can't even read that. It says 2001 made in China. So you can see how old this figure is, was made in 2001. So uh, there you go. And that's about it for the details. So let's quickly get into the articulation now. So let's zoom out a little bit here get back into focus all right and articulation is very basic so head can go up and down side to side rotate arms can of course rotate full 360 degrees uh, the shoulder pads can move a little bit arms can go out about that much there is rotation here at the bicep elbow bend is at one joint a little bit less than 90 degree bend there uh, hands can of course rotate as for the waist, it doesn't have much of a waist just due to the design of this figure, but there is a slight bit of rotation, as you can see in there, not really too much. Uh, this is made of a rubberized material, so while it doesn't move, you can kind of get it to move out of the way a little bit. Legs can kick forward about that much. Going back is, I'd say, about that much. Uh, any further, it does pop off the ball joint, but it is easy enough to just pop into place there um going out to the side you get about i'd say about that much there and then the knee bend it bends at a single joint a little bit less than 90 degree bend there and then getting down to the ankles you get some up and down side to side a little bit of rotation and the ankle guard can move separately from the ankle so there you go that's basically it for the royal gundam which fun fact in japanese version is also known as the john bull gundam um, very basic figure, but um, I really can't complain about it. And really cool design, really cool figure, and really cool gun. So um, let's get into the Mermaid Gundam next. Now getting into the Mermaid Gundam, this guy is a bit more complicated because he does transform, and I'll talk more about that later. But uh, getting into the robot mode first, uh, getting into accessories, he does come with this really cool looking trident. And other than that, he does come with a pair of open hands and closed fist. My figure came with one closed fist and one open hand. And that's about it for the accessories. Um, now getting into the details, uh, I really am a big fan of this design. Um, and it is obviously a really wacky design. You can tell what it transforms into obviously a giant fish um but i just first of all i really am a big fan of how that head looks so let me zoom in a little bit here Oop, the camera up there there we go Let's see if we can get a closer look at the head sculpt there and i think it looks really cool um i'm a big fan of that mohawk that it has it looks really unique there and then the two little fins on the side Oh man, I'm not too sure why my camera's having such a hard time focusing right now. Apologize about that. Oh. But you get the idea. Really cool looking head sculpt there. Uh, going down, we get some really cool looking shoulder pads. Um, and then some really cool mechanical details going down the chest. Oh my gosh, come on, focus. There we go. I guess that's as good as if we're gonna get it there. So yeah, some really cool looking mechanical details going down the body here getting to the legs. He's got some flippers, which is pretty funny. Um, and then turning it to the side, we get a little bit of a silhouette of the fish mode. So I get like the fish eyes here. We get this little fin here that moves. Um, and then getting down to the tail. He's got a little rudder here that can move. Um, and yeah, I mean, really that's all it for the details. Uh, so let's get into the articulation here very quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove the trident. There we go. And get into articulation. Now, just due to the transformation, this guy does have some issues, unfortunately. Uh, but starting off, uh, his head. Well, first thing is his head kind of moves here, but that's more for the transformation. So you kind of have to hold this part down to get the movement out of the actual head itself. So you get some up and down, side to side. A little bit of rotation uh, the shoulders can kind of move a little bit here and go up and down that's more for a transformation uh, arms can go up about that much back about that much 
and go out about this much. There is rotation, elbow bend, a single joint, a little bit less than 90 degree bend there. Hands can rotate a full 360 degrees. Uh, obviously due to design, he doesn't really have a waist. And then as for the legs, uh, this is where it gets a little bit interesting just due to the mechanism that's inside um, the body, which I'll get into a little later. Um, but it does have a little bit of like an up and down movement there. Again, that's more for a transformation. Um, and the natural legs can basically go all the way around because there's not really any like skirts that's hindering it there. And then going out to the side, you get a really decent range there. Uh, you get some rotation and then a knee bend at a single joint. That's, that's closer to 90 degrees there. Uh, kneecaps can also move. That's more for a transformation. And then the flippers can go up and down there. And then I already mentioned this fin can move. And then for the tail, it's actually segmented into three parts. So you get a little bit of movement here, here, and here. And then as I mentioned, their little rudder or tail thing can rotate a full 360 and go up and down. It's just on the whole bot joint in there. Um, so yeah, the main problem is for first of all, as you can see, this whole thing can lift off and that's for the transformation. Um, and then you can see how the leg joint in there works. So we get a hinge joint in here. So the legs can go all the way to the front here. And again, that's more for a transformation. And then it's also attached via a ball joint. And the main issue is if you don't have the legs positioned just right, um, it kind of has trouble standing because the tail gets in the way. So he's always constantly like having to lean forward a little bit to kind of compensate for the tail. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Um, and other than that, like this whole mechanism thing is just really kind of like finicky, uh, but we'll get more into that later uh, when I get into actual transformation. So that should be fun. Um, but anyways, that's about it for the accessories and articulation for this figure in the robot mode. Um, and yeah, let's get into the transformation now, shall we? TFG from the future here, and I gotta admit that first attempt that I tried doing on camera was a complete fail. So I had to stop the camera and just try to transform it uh, a few times to see if I can get it down. It's not a hard transformation, it's just very finicky and you have to make sure everything lines up perfectly or else it's not going to work. So uh, yeah, this is attempt number two and let's see if I can just do this really quickly here. So uh, to start off, let's go ahead and take the legs and we're gonna rotate them here so that the flippers are facing sideways like so. Next, we're gonna go ahead and open up at the back and from here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hinge the legs all the way to the front. So they should be positioned like that. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and hinge this whole part all the way up until this part was completely covering the head. Uh, make sure you tilt the head back so there should be enough clearance for this part to go through. So you're gonna push here. You can see once I start to push it, well, it should in theory, there we go. Push that part up to the front. And again, this is, where it gets a little bit annoying because you just gotta make sure there's enough clearance for everything here. So you just push, push, there we go, there we go. And now you can see the head is being covered there. And then from here, this part's a little bit, not challenging, just kind of frustrating is you wanna take the kneecaps and kind of rotate them out of the way. And then you're gonna bend the knee here like that, and the kneecap should go to the front. Oh, I just lost the kneecap there, but it should be something like that. Um, let me see if I can do it to the other side here. So just bend here as much as you can go. And then also make sure this part is all the way pushed forward. Go. So it should be something like that. And from here, uh, I don't think you just clap the flippers up like that. Um, and then after that, he's gonna take these. These are just gonna hinge here. And basically, it's gonna be collapsing the arms inside. 
like so, and then from there, in theory, you should be able to just close it up, but it's never that simple, because again, you have to make sure everything's lined up perfectly for it to work out, and then snap it into place, and hey, there you go. I actually kind of got it, uh, except for that one kneecap, so I'll go ahead and grab that. And then from here, you're gonna take the shoulder pads and just kind of believe they just go like that. Like so, and there you go. Well, I don't want to fillet this fish, but you get the idea. You have the fish mode. And here we have the Mermaid Gundam in its fish mode and all of its fishy glory. And I gotta admit, this design is pretty dumb looking, but to give toy uh, makers credit, they executed it pretty well, and it's actually pretty accurate to how it was in the show as well, even down to the transformation. While the toy itself is a bit finicky, um, it still does its job. Could it have been better? Probably. But again, uh, keeping in mind that this figure came out in probably in the early 2000s, probably 2001, 2002, um, it still does its job pretty well. Uh, so let's get into the armament on the fish mode uh, very quickly. He does have laser eyes, so these would shoot out like these trident lasers, which is pretty cool. And then something else I forgot to mention, he's, he also has a net that he would use to trap opponents. Uh, so that's pretty cool as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically he turns into a giant fish tank and he would just ram them to mobile suits underwater and use the laser eyes. And honestly, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, very quickly getting into articulation, it's basically the same as in the robot mode. You know, it still has the little um, flippers here that can move. Uh, I guess these fins can move, the top fin can move, and uh, on the bottom I love how he just has a little submarine opening there where you can see the Gundam face in there. So that's pretty funny, and then obviously the uh, tail still has all the same movements here, so we went here, here here and then the little rudder at the end can move so uh yeah and as you can see one problem is he doesn't really like to stay together in the fish mode so um yeah anyways that's about it for the fish mode not really uh much else to say about it so uh let's uh get into some quick size comparisons and then we'll get into my final thoughts one quick comparison i wanted to make in the fish mode was to bring in his other transforming companion here he is with the transformed Toro Gundam, and yeah, I just love both of these figures, um, and they're just very fitting for G Gundam. Uh, they're both transformable, and they both transform into um, animals. This one clearly being a bullhead, and this one clearly being a fish, and I don't know, I just find them <laughs> hilarious together. So there you go. And for a quick size comparison, I wanted to bring in some other uh, mobile fighter suits that I have. So we have the Mermaid Gundam with the Toro Gundam, which is knocked over the John Bull Gundam or Royal Gundam, and finally, the Zebra Gundam. So yeah, there you go. And that about do it for this double feature review. And getting to my final thoughts, can I recommend these guys? Yes, I can. Now, if I only had to recommend one, as much as I do love the wacky design of the Mermaid Gundam, I would probably go with the Royal Gundam over the Mermaid Gundam. Just because from a figure standpoint, this guy is super solid. Um, he does come with a badass looking gun. And um, yeah, I mean, you get cool design, cool accessory, um, very solid figure, absolutely no problems. Uh, if you do like the more wacky design of the Mermaid Gundam, I still would recommend it. Just know that the figure itself is very finicky and the transformation can be a bit frustrating at times, but still really fun figure. Would definitely recommend both of these guys. Uh, and yeah, that's about it for me. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and obviously don't forget to subscribe as well as turn that notification bell. Uh, I know I've been very busy recently with school, uh, so I guess I always say I'll try to make videos when I can, so stay tuned. I do have more content coming hopefully soon. Um, if you do enjoy these Gundam MSAA reviews, let me know. I do have a couple other cheap Gundam figures I can review if you guys want. Um, if you guys or interested in more model kit videos, I, I am working on a few kits and I have some stuff in my backlog as well. So, um, anyways, oh, and obviously, don't forget to join the Discord. I'll link to that in the description below. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, and let me know in the comments below who would win in a Gundam fight the Royal Gundam or the Mermaid Gundam?
As always, Zebra Gundam. Also, yes, if you couldn't tell, I did use the G Gundam soundtrack as our background music. So, will this video get copyright? Probably. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Go check out the G Gundam soundtrack if you haven't already. It's such an underrated soundtrack. It's got some badass battle themes and some absolutely chill jazz music.